Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to settle the age-old, or should I say one-month-old question of which is better, the mule cart or lumber camp. Now while I've already covered the basics of the mule cart and its quirks, this video is going to be focused on looking at them side by side, as well as pick up on some of the comments in that earlier video regarding questions I didn't answer or even think of checking. Now, spoiler alert, while the main takeaway here is going to be that the mule cart is better at wood collection, I think we should actually start by addressing some of its drawbacks and more negative aspects. In game, the first one you run into is of course its cost, with the regular lumber camps 100 wood plus an extra 20 food. Even with the Armenian's 25% discount, it doesn't feel that much cheaper, as wood is generally faster to collect than food, with food often being a bottleneck resource in the early and mid game. Another notable disadvantage is it's much more vulnerable to raiding, and to put some numbers on that, archers are 8 times faster at destroying a mule cart than a traditional camp due to its low HP and pierce armor, and even melee units like scouts and men at arms are nearly 3 times faster at destroying them. Another disadvantage is they can't be used as part of a wall, meaning you have to full wall them in if you want that level of security or risk leaving your wood lines exposed, again opening you up to raids. Another issue is they're finicky when being selected, and in the heat of the moment it can be tricky to get just the villagers when drag selecting. Even holding alt, which usually selects just your eco units and skips over military, still catches the mule cart, which more often than not means they're a hindrance when fighting off scouts or militia for example. Altogether, in terms of very early game, there's maybe a slight point here to the lumber camp for being cheaper, less vulnerable to attacks, and getting in your way less often in the early game. One other common criticism for mule carts is over the long run they have a tendency to trap villagers. I wouldn't say this is constant, but it definitely happens. The best thing I've found for this is just to move the mule cart if you notice it, manually placing the cart back a couple of tiles instead of selecting a tree. It would probably work slightly better if carts naturally stayed farther back or had a smaller collision radius, but the odd trap villager is just a fact of life at the moment. Now, one comment that caught my eye was someone asking if it would be worth patrolling your mule cart to avoid this. A quick glance shows there's no patrol option available, but you can get them to do that if you select them alongside a military unit. You can then redirect the military unit and the cart will continue with its patrol as long as the route isn't too short. I tried it out in a quick test and a patrolling mule cart lost 18% of the wood line's efficiency simply from villagers wasting time chasing it. So that's a thumbs down for me on that little hack, but points for creativity. So far, I have to admit it feels like I'm ragging quite a bit on the mule cart, but now let's switch and talk about its advantages over a traditional lumber camp. The first is that it can mill deer. I've seen this suggested in comments, and while I'm usually not big on sending villagers out to deer because of all the walking time, an advantage of the mule cart is you don't lose the 100 wood cost of a usual mill while also being able to send them to wood immediately after with the cart filling both rolls. Depending on the distance to the nearest woodline, this can result in basically no extra walking and avoids deer pushing if that's something you don't like to do. Obviously, if you can straddle wood and gold together at the same time as well, while not a great long-term plan, for picking up a quick 10 gold for a militia rush, it can be incredibly handy. But with some of the peripheral factors out of the way now, and points in favor of each so far, now let's get to the main question. How much better overall is the mule cart for wood income? I've said before, I felt like the mule cart is an indirect sit bonus for its extra wood, but now let's find out on what scale we're talking about. The benefit is of course twofold. With the cart staying close enough, you theoretically keep villager efficiency pretty high, getting more wood income in the long run, minus the odd villager getting stuck, while then also saving the 100 wood cost of new lumber camps every few tiles. So it seems likely the mule cart should end up putting you ahead. Right away though, we hit a snag, and that there isn't a basic archetypal mule cart sieve. There are two, and each has their own bonus that can get mixed up with the effect of the mule cart itself. To start with Armenians, they don't just have mule carts, but their cart's ecotechs also have 25% greater impact. To try to isolate just the effect of that bonus, I repeated a 5 minute test with some trees containing a lot of extra wood and some very close lumber camps to see how much the Armenians bonus helps when walking distance has just a minor impact and the mule cart is removed. Doing that, I found depending on the upgrades given, it ranged from a 3% advantage for Armenians up to about a 10% advantage with 2 man saw. On the other side, we have Georgians, with theoretically a comparable plus 10% if they have a fortified church nearby. That does come with a 200 wood cost and some construction up front, but over time should theoretically be roughly comparable to the Armenians bonus in the very long term. Now let's put it all together though into a large scale test. 
And for this, we're gonna be comparing a whole bunch of different setups at once. Starting in the blue, we have our control group of generic lumberjacks on a single camp that we never refresh as the set and forget default. Next in red, we'll have the same villagers, but this time replace the camp every time there's a one tile gap, which I found before is the most wood efficient way to do things over a very long period of time. We'll then do that same ideal lumber camp setup, but with Celts in green, as our benchmark of a top tier lumberjack bonus prior to mule carts being added to the game. Next, we'll have a basic Georgia mule cart without a fortified church as our simplest case. This will show us how much of an advantage a mule cart gives purely on its own. And following that, we'll have Armenians with their enhanced lumber ecotex bonus stacking with the mule cart. And finally, Georgians who will start by building a fortified church, putting them slightly behind, but then hopefully catching up with that plus 10% gather rate boost. I ran the test twice, the first time with only feudal techs to get a sense of the early to mid game effect, and then a second time with all available upgrades, each for over 30 minutes, tracking the total wood every minute. So let's see the results. Starting off with feudal upgrades, as expected, the ideal camp placement did better than staying on one camp, of course. But maybe surprisingly, after 30 minutes, it was only 4% ahead. Being diligent with your camp replacement gives a fairly modest effect over even this time period once the cost of the camps and the build time is factored in. The Celts then improved upon that by 12% over the full 35 minute test. And in case you're wondering, the reason they don't give their expected plus 15% is simply because they're still walking to factor in. Ironically, the faster they collect wood, the more often they have to walk back to the lumber camp as well, creating a negative feedback loop to actually hold back their bonus. Switching then to the mule cart, it ended up being between 5 and 6% better than the generic sieve's optimal replacement. The mule cart alone is pretty clearly not as good as the Celts bonus, even with the cost of the Celts lumber camps included, but it looks like the mule cart purely on its own gives a solid 5% wood boost over time. I really wanted to have an idea of a number for this, as the most popular comment on my first mule cart video was about the potential of opening up two other civilizations, which this test shows would clearly give them a bit of a wood collection boost in the mid game if that were to happen, with about half the scale of the Celts bonus. Of course, Armenians better eco upgrades stack on top of the mule cart's inherent boost, giving them a combined 9% faster collection than the optimal generic civilization. Even with just double bit axe here, they've almost caught up to Celts, which is actually better than I expected. That ended up being about equal with Georgians if you subtract the 200 wood of the fortified church they had to build, with the main takeaway being that Celts are still going to be the best, but stacking the mule cart on top of the new civilization's bonuses makes them surprisingly competitive. Now let's contrast that with having all available upgrades, remembering Celts and Georgians are missing two man saw, and Armenians are now getting the full impact of their better techs. This time I went with a 40 minute test to really tease the differences apart. Starting off, diligent camp replacement again paid off, this time with a 7% advantage, basically because faster chopping with better techs means the single camp becomes inefficient a bit earlier, and the test was also slightly longer. The Celts advantage though dropped to just between 3 and 4% above that. And if you're wondering what happened to the plus 15% bonus they're supposed to be getting, that's because they lack two man saw. So at best, with no walking time, Celts are automatically down to just a 5% advantage in the late game. Next, the Georgia mule cart without a fortified church really didn't do all that well, coming in just under a generic civilization in fact. The reason here is Georgians don't have two man saw either, and the higher efficiency of the mule cart can't fully make up for that. It looks like the benefit of the mule cart here was around plus 7% all on its own, and at the least we can say it almost makes up for lacking two man saw. Adding in the fortified church for Georgians though, then boosts them up by another 8%, and even with its upfront cost and build time, it's enough to give Georgians better lumberjacks than even a perfectly optimal lumber camp setup with all upgrades. By far the winner though at this stage is Armenians, collecting 15% more wood than a generic civilization and about 11% more than Celts. If there was any doubt about Armenians having the best lumberjacks in the late game, for me, that's put to rest. The combo of a mule cart plus what's already a great wood bonus all on its own is pretty wild, averaging just under 37 wood per minute for each villager. That means a single Armenian villager and mule cart team can supply the wood needed for 14 farmers in the late game with crop rotation, whereas a Celt lumberjack would struggle to keep up with the 9 thanks to missing a few tags. All this to say that a quick and dirty rule is the mule cart alone is worth about a 5% boost in the mid game, with Georgians and Armenians each then adding their own special bonus on top of that, bringing Georgians up to roughly the level of Celts with a fortified church nearby. 
in the late game, they fall off a bit because of a missing tech. Whereas Armenian's late game wood income sets the bar to new heights that we clearly haven't seen in the game before. So hopefully that gave a bit more concrete idea of what I think a lot of us suspected intuitively, that the mule cart may have its drawbacks, but in the long run can give a solid advantage for your wood income. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.